an herbal primer by Green Fire Herbs. This is Lesson 6, Traditional Chinese Medicine. Traditional Chinese medicine is over 5,000 years old. It's rooted in the ancient philosophy of Taoism and may have been influenced by Ayurveda. There are several similarities between the two. Like Ayurveda, it's a complete healing system that envisions the human body as part of and following the same laws as the larger universe. There is an underlying central force and everything is made up of five elements. The various parts of the body, including the organs and tissues, have distinct functions but are interdependent. Good health is maintained by maintaining the proper balance. It's the primary healing system practiced by many people in much of the world, including the U.S. It's a system that continues to grow and develop. It encompasses many different practices and our focus will be on its use of herbs. In traditional Chinese medicine, the most essential concept is that of energy, or qi. There are two primary aspects of qi. It's intelligence and function, a directing force in the universe, though that aspect is beyond the scope of this lesson. It's also the essential life force that animates all life. There are many different types of qi. We're born with prenatal, or yuan qi. Throughout our lives, our qi is replenished through food and air. The qi we get from our food and air goes through a few transformations in our bodies. Different types of qi have different affinities for different organs and other parts of the body, and each type is responsible for its own set of functions. For example, the amount of yuan qi we have is fixed at birth. It's rooted in the kidneys and is the foundation of the yin and yang energies of the body. It's a dynamic force that participates in the production of blood and it supports the internal organs. Zhang qi accumulates in the chest and promotes respiration and circulation by nourishing the lungs and the heart. It influences speech and the strength of the voice. If Zhang Qi is weak, the extremities will be weak or cold, and the voice may be weak as well. It's easily affected by emotions. Yuan Qi and Zhang Qi support each other. Zhen Qi is called the true Qi or normal Qi. Yuan Qi helps Zhang Qi transform into Zhen Qi. This is the final stage. This is the Qi that circulates through the meridians. It has two different forms. Ying Qi is the nutritive Qi. It nourishes the internal organs in the whole body. It flows through the blood vessels as well as the meridian channels. Wei Qi is the protective Qi. It travels both inside and outside of the channels, primarily on the skin and muscles. It warms, moistens, and nourishes the skin and muscles and regulates sweating and body temperature. This is a very simplified description of some types of Qi to give you a better understanding of what it is and how it works. Somehow, just calling it life energy doesn't do it justice. If there's one overriding theme in traditional Chinese medicine, it's harmony. This is beautifully expressed in the Tao of yin and yang. Yin and yang are two opposing yet complementary forces that govern and shape everything in the universe. Yin and yang are like night and day, or the two sides of a coin, in that you can't have one without the other. Everything has both yin and yang. The two are interdependent and each requires the other. Notice that the yin-yang symbol is not half a black circle and half a white circle, but the white and black flow around each other, and each contains a dot of the other. All yin contains some yang, and all yang contains some yin. Under the right conditions, yin can transform into yang, and or yang can transform into yin. There is a continuous dynamic flow occurring to keep these energies balanced and in harmony. Further, that constant change is part of the harmony. Yin is the earth, the moon, darkness, water, space, matter, rest, growth, and contraction. Yang is heaven, the sun, light, fire, time, energy, activity, generating, expansion. Yin is flat, descending, below, west, north, right, and female. Yang is round, rising, above, east, south, left, and male. Yin is a passive, yielding force that is cold, dark, and negative. Yang is an active, expansive force that is hot and positive. The liver, heart, spleen, lungs, kidneys, and the pericardium are yin organs. The gallbladder, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, bladder, and triple burner are yang organs. Different parts of the body are primarily yin or yang. Yin is the interior, the front, the body, below the waist, structure, and the blood and body fluids. Yang is the exterior, the back, the head, above the waist, function, and chi. The 
The body contains a network of channels or pathways called meridians. We've already mentioned these briefly when talking about qi. Think of the meridians as an energy network running throughout the body. Qi flows through the body along these meridians in specific ways, though some qi flows outside the meridians as well. There are 12 primary meridians. These are the liver and gallbladder pair, the heart and small intestine pair, the spleen and stomach pair, the lung large intestine pair, the kidney and bladder pair, and the pericardium and triple burner pair. Note that each of these pairs has a yin part and a yang part. There are also two strange flow meridians, the governing vessel and the conception vessel. There are other meridians, but those are rarely used by traditional Chinese medicine practitioners. Health problems arise when there are problems in the meridians. Blockages or stagnation can result from a lack of qi or too much qi, when the flow of energy is off, or if the yin-yang energy balance is off. The qi flow can be balanced or stimulated using acupuncture, acupressure, diet, and of course herbs. The five elements of traditional Chinese medicine are wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Think of these as master groups or patterns in nature. Everything is related to one of these groups, including everything in the body, our vital organs, our emotions, the seasons, colors, direction, stage of growth, development, sound, tastes, and more, even times of the day. They're fundamental energies in nature and have yin and yang aspects. They're dynamic. Within each element are two fundamental relationships generation and control. Generation is yang. It nurtures and promotes growth, while control, which is yin, is a restraining energy. Between the two, there is a balance of just enough. There isn't too much or too little. It's not too fast or too slow, too strong or too weak. An example that relates to the body is the spleen. The heart generates the spleen, while the liver controls it. Good health requires maintaining the elements in balance. The chart you see describes the aspects that are associated with each element. Wood is sour, anger, the liver, the gallbladder, eyes, tendons, east, germination, spring, 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., and green. Fire is bitter, happiness, the heart, the small intestine, the tongue, vessels, south, growth, summer, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and red. Earth is sweet, worry, the spleen, the stomach, the mouth, muscles, center, transformation, late summer, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m., and yellow. Metal is pungent, grief, the lungs, the large intestine, the nose, hair and skin, west, reaping, autumn, 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., and white. Water is salty, fear, kidneys, the urinary system, ears, bones, north, storage, winter, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., and black. Each element generates another element and is controlled by another element, as indicated in the graphic. Looking at the organs in each list, you can see that each of the elements is associated with a meridian pair, but there are five elements and six pairs. The ministerial fire is a special element that accounts for the missing meridian pair and the time 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Very briefly, diagnostics in traditional Chinese medicine involves taking case histories, checking the complexion, the luster of the eyes and hair, the color and texture of the tongue, 29 types of pulses, smells, and more. All of these are considered in the context of yin and yang, qi, the flow of qi through the meridians, the five elements, and the other systems we haven't covered. It's a complex process that's pretty much beyond our scope here. Just as there are several interrelated systems in traditional Chinese medicine, there are also several different ways of classifying herbs. Herbs can be classified according to what is called the Four Natures. This describes the degree of yin and yang in an herb, moving from cold or extreme yin through cool and warm to hot or extreme yang. Herbs are selected according to the patient's internal yin-yang balance. Hot herbs are used when the patient is too cold, warm herbs when the patient is too cool, and so on. At the yin extreme, herbs are cold, bitter, salty, strong, heavy, and very fragrant. At the yang extreme, they're hot, sharp, sweet, bland, light, and have very little fragrance. Herbs are also classified as superior, general, or inferior. 
Superior herbs are gentle, nourishing herbs, sometimes called tonics. They can be taken long term with no ill effects. They work slowly, but their effects are cumulative. They're used for chronic conditions and rebuilding the organ systems. General herbs are used for acute conditions and symptoms. They can also support the actions of other herbs. They are taken for shorter periods of time and for more specific reasons. Inferior herbs are toxic. They can be very useful in extreme situations, but they are generally taken for a brief time and always in small amounts and under close supervision of a very experienced practitioner. And of course, there is also the taste classification. There are five tastes, which we've already mentioned when discussing the elements. They are sweet, bitter, pungent, sour, and salty. Each taste has different qualities and different actions in the body. Sweet herbs are yang in nature. They are nourishing, working to tonify and harmonize bodily systems. Some sweet herbs are diuretics, draining dampness from the body. They're scattering and can help alleviate pain and spasms. It's a taste associated with the stomach and digestive system, the spleen, stomach, meridian, pear, and earth. Bitter herbs are yin in nature. They clear heat and dampness, lower chi, and improve appetite. It's a taste associated with the heart and cardiovascular system, the heart, small intestine, meridian, pear, and fire. Pungent herbs are yang in nature. They increase the production of sweat and increase chi and blood. The diaphoretic. They scatter, disperse, and move. It's the taste associated with the lungs, the lymph and immune system, the lung, large intestine, meridian, pear, and metal. Sour herbs are yin in nature. They're astringent. They constrict or consolidate. They improve digestion, soften the arteries, and prevent or reverse leakage of energy and fluids. It's the taste associated with the liver and nervous system, the liver, bladder, meridian, pear, and wood. Salty herbs are yin in nature. They stimulate the bowels, reduce hard masses, and reduce phlegm. It's the taste associated with the kidney and endocrine system, the kidney, bladder, meridian, pear, and water. Herbs can also be classified according to over 20 different actions like sedatives, laxatives, carminatives, expectorants, etc. When we're done discussing the world's major herbal systems, we'll start discussing these actions in detail. It will probably come as no surprise to learn that traditional Chinese medicine uses herbs in complex formulas. These can be taken as pills or capsules, but are most commonly made into tea. Everything we've talked about is considered, and this is reflected in the herbal formulas that are developed. Formulas usually start with a king or emperor herb. This is the primary herb, selected to have the strongest effect on the primary problem. Minister or deputy herbs are selected to help with the primary imbalance and any secondary imbalances. There are several assistants or adjunct herbs. The helpful assistants support and strengthen the king. The corrective assistants counter any toxic or harsh effect of the king and minister herbs. They also help to minimize digestive side effects and improve digestion. The opposing assistants buffer the effect of the king. These are typically included when dealing with complex problems. The envoys or messenger herbs guide and focus the other herbs, directing them to a specific direction or to a particular organ, channel, or area of the body. In addition, temperature and taste are taken into account when selecting the herbs for the formula. Tastes are taken into account for their energetic properties only. Chinese herbal teas tend to taste awful. Herbal formulas aren't always custom developed for each patient. A large number of established formulas are available. They can be made up according to established recipes or purchased pre-made. In doing the research for this lesson, I came across a website that claimed that traditional Chinese medicine is based on mysticism and folklore. The implication, of course, was that it shouldn't be taken seriously. I've addressed this indirectly before in the lessons on energetics and Ayurveda, but I wanted to discuss it more directly here. It's easy to dismiss worldviews that are different from our own as mysticism, but that presumes that only we can be right and every other way of looking at the world is wrong. It also conveniently dismisses any real understanding or discussion of the worldview or any comparison between it and our own. Commonalities are overlooked because of the strange terminology of the other system, and it buys into the belief that no one could know much of anything before the advent of modern science. Folklore is another label used to dismiss knowledge or information not obtained through modern science. Folklore is defined in dictionary.com as the traditional beliefs, legends, customs, etc. of a people, or a body of widely held but false or unsubstantiated beliefs. 
interesting how false and unsubstantiated are paired. Folklore and old wives' tales are often passed by word of mouth from person to person, from generation to generation, so the information can become inaccurate over time. This is all very different from a body of knowledge based on written text, continual research and hands-on experience, and carefully passed from master practitioners to students or apprentices, as is the case with the world's various healing systems including Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine. Dictionary.com defines science as the systematic knowledge of the physical or material world gained through observation and experimentation. While we may have many wonderful scientific tools that have been developed over the past couple of hundred years, observation and experimentation have been available to people for as long as there have been people. The systematic part of the definition refers to a theory or framework that holds, organizes, and categorizes the information or knowledge obtained from observation and experimentation. Acupuncture is outside the scope of this lesson, but it provides a useful example. Research in the United States and Europe has demonstrated that it works. It's covered under many U.S. health plans. Traditional Chinese medicine offers the only explanation as to how or why it works, and that explanation is based on the flow of qi through the meridians. Clearly there are gaps in modern science's understanding of the body. Perhaps it would make more sense to take a closer look at what traditional Chinese medicine has to say, rather than dismiss a long-established science in favor of simply calling it mysticism. Clearly, traditional Chinese medicine is a very complex system. You've only covered the very basic aspects here, leaving out, for example, the six evils, the six extraordinary organs, the seven emotions, the eight principles, and more. What we did cover should give you a basic understanding of how complex traditional Chinese medicine is and of how it works. Each system relates to and is influenced by the other systems. Everything figures into the yin-yang balance. Herbs are selected for herbal formulas based on a number of characteristics of the herb itself as well as what role it is to play in the formula. If traditional Chinese medicine is something that you've considered studying, please don't let this lesson convince you otherwise. There is certainly a lot to learn, but once you understand the basics, you'll find that the different pieces fit together, making them easier to understand. But that requires spending more time on those basics than we're able to fit in here. If you're interested in learning more about traditional Chinese medicine or in using any of its formulas, you have a foundation now to work with. So please, join us next week for Lesson 7, American Indian Herbalism.